A lot of late nights and a lot of early mornings, and I'm so grateful to all three of our kids, Patrick, Cindy, and Connor, and their devotion to the campaign. And from a thanks standpoint, I'm kind of moving past. I, I, this is my wife of 32 years, who I met on this campus 36 years ago in history, back-to-back -back history and speech class. But my wife, Tracy, Tracy right here to my left. Um, yeah, you can come up and understand up here, Tracy. Yeah. My wife, Tracy. <laughs> This was a joint decision to do this, a personal joint decision to do it, and uh, it's been a journey together. Tracy has traveled so much to the campaign with me, and you know, it's been really interesting as you travel and do this, you, you, you have people tell you, gosh, you're so neat to have your son with you, so neat to have your wife with you, as if that's a rare thing. I don't know if it's a rare thing, but I know it's a blessed thing for us to have that, and I'm so thankful to them. Um, I want to thank uh, and congratulate Cameron Webb uh, on, a, on a strong campaign. We certainly, uh, uh, we certainly had to work hard for this. You know, appreciate the tough race that he put us through. Um, again, we don't have final results, but we certainly expect this lead to hold and it really to expand. And we look for a confirmation of that. I want to thank Denver Riggleman for his service to the district these past two years, and certainly wish him well as he finishes his term. You know, this journey started, as I mentioned, with a call from Rick Boyer. And he said, Bob, I know the answer is probably no, but is there any chance that you'd do this? And, you know, I had decided not to run again in Campbell County. I thought I was moving on from politics. I'm going to focus full time on my job here at Liberty as the executive director of Flames Club. This, we had this event here because this has really been my home for 15 years, this very room. And uh, as I had the privilege of serving my alma mater. And, uh, and, and Rick and I was really planning to pour myself into my 70-hour-a-week job without being a supervisor anymore and allow a neighbor friend, Steve Shockley, who's succeeded me on the board to, to serve and, uh, and thought I was finished with politics and was asked to, to come to a meeting to talk and to pray and to consider about taking on this, this cause. And in that meeting, there were people like, uh, special thanks, Daniel Bradshaw, our chairman in Fargo, Rick Buchanan, who's down in Mecklenburg, Pat McSweeney, Ron Maxwell, Ed Yencho, I don't know if this is like revealing a, a, a mafia here, <laughs> Virgil Gilly, and Nancy Smith. And I think Chris Shores was by phone during that meeting there. We hadn't met yet at that point. Um, again, I said thanks to those who came on early. Thank you to Pastor Jonathan Falwell uh, here at Thomas Road Baptist Church. Special thanks to E.W. Jackson. E.W. Jackson. An outstanding nominee for, for U.S. Senate previously, an outstanding nominee for Lieutenant Governor, someone I was proud to support, and the way he traveled up from Suffolk to support us event after event, and what a, what a champion for freedom, what a champion for liberty, what a champion for the Constitution. So thank you for being able to This campaign went through a lot of adversity. It was a challenge for sure. Um, you know, we were battling against the advantage of incumbency early on in the nomination. Uh, early on, the advantages of money we were outspent almost 10 to 1 for the nomination battle. Uh, we were certainly against the establishment and all the high-level endorsements, if you will, the very, very top. Uh, even leadership on pick of campus, by the way, uh, as it turns out. But, uh, you know, there, there was, uh, we, we battled through ballot access. <laughs> we battled through rumors that we weren't going to be on the ballot. Uh, and which we knew we weren't going to have an issue with that, but uh, we uh, uh, we battled through um, when we came to nominate money again. By the way, you know it's funny. This race was called the most competitive race in the country, the only 50-50 race in the country. I think that was because a lot of people wanted that to be so. We never believed that it was a 50-50 race. We were out spent. It ended up being more like two to one. Uh, by the time that all the resources were invested on both sides of the campaign, it was funny last night you saw these so-called prognosticators all of a sudden start to flip it from a toss-up to leads Republican. I think they wanted to be right at the end of the race, right? You know, and uh, after they tried to fundraise for my opponent by calling it a toss-up race for months to try to generate funds for my opponent, try to make it so, uh, and you know. Uh, 
it, it was just interesting. We, we, we worked through a, a lot of uh, dishonest smear tactics, yep. parroted by the media, by the way. Parroted by the media, they would source my opponent with the attacks that they would they would print or they would they would write, and so we battled through that. Uh, we we battled. Uh, you know, the folks who said a true conservative couldn't win, and we felt that burden, if you will, to make sure that we did win for true conservatism. Uh, and, uh, but this was a victory for true conservative principles. At the end of the day. This is a victory. This will be a victory for true conservative principles. Uh, this will be a victory for the, for the nation's founding Judeo-Christian principles. Amen. Yes. And this will be a victory for religious liberty Amen. and the unashamed importance of faith and family. Amen. But also, even while our friends in the media wanted to boil down the race to one or two issues and want to talk about one or two things that the voters didn't ask us about, it's funny, I would often get questions and say, well, you asked me that, but nobody else asked me that on the campaign trail. <laughs> but this was a victory also for safety and security. Yep. Yeah. 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 Law enforcement, law and order. It was a victory for you know, safely reopening the country. Yeah. Yeah. It was a victory for our constitutional rights, which we've seen trampled on recently. A victory for free market capitalism. It's a victory for low taxes, deregulation, energy independence. A victory for secure borders and merit-based immigration reform. A victory for fiscal responsibility, school choice, our Second Amendment rights. And this is a victory for President Trump because we ran boldly and strongly in support of the president. And we did that because it's the right thing to do because he's the right president for this country. And no president has deserved more of re-election more than this president. And so we supported the president openly because it was the right thing to do. It was also the smart thing to do in the 5th District, and it's nice when the right thing to do, when you stand for the right things, that applies to the principles we applied in this race. Yes. It's nice when you do the right thing, and it's also the, the smart thing in your district. It's nice when those line up. <laughs> so we look forward, and I get asked this question over and over in the course of the race. Hey, you call yourself a biblical conservative, you call yourself a born-again Christian. How can you represent people who maybe don't agree with you on everything? You know, I think people respect someone who has integrity, yes. somebody who stands on principle, yes. somebody who stands on conviction, someone they can trust. Yeah. Someone who will actually tell you where they stand on something. And someone who will tell you yeah. where they stand and will take positions. Yeah. You know, no one agrees with anyone 100% of the time, or otherwise yeah. two people agree all the time. One of them is not necessary, right? <laughs> That's why God gave us two parents. That's why we're husband and wife together. Yeah. We don't agree 100% of the time. I'm wrong sometimes. So. <laughs> But we look forward to representing everybody in the 5th District to the best of our ability. And we look forward to earning the support of everybody in the 5th District. We look forward to validating the faith and the trust that's been placed by everybody who's voted for us. Thank you, Bob. And so uh, Amen. we're thankful to be in the commanding position we are tonight, the commanding lead we are tonight. We look forward to having that validated and finalized. We wish that we could give that to you here right now, and we expect to increase our margin in the counties that are outstanding still on the on the votes. But I want to say thank you to all of you who are in this room. I want to say God bless you for your efforts. And God bless all of the people in the Fifth District, and may God continue to bless the United States of America.
know, uh, let's go with Andre Whitehead, my fellow alumni friend from 35 years ago. Yes, sir. Bob, were you ever in doubt, were you ever um, fearful that you may not be able to pull this off being outstanding? We always believe we would win. We always believe we would win the nomination. And we always believe we would win the general election. Because we had faith in the people of the 5th District. I didn't believe that the people in the 5th District would believe the baseless smear attacks. Yes. Uh, the dishonest attack ads and the tactics that were employed in the course of the campaign. Provable. I, I found it interesting that, you know, we run an ad challenging my opponent for wanting to defund the police, and we had so much of the media say, how can you say that about your opponent? He denies it. So we thought, well, why don't we just run the video that shows they said it. <laughs> and then they still would parrot my opponent's, uh, you know, accusations that we had, you know, that, or, or they would parrot, well, he denies that he, you know, that, that, you know, he wants to defund the police. I'll bet they never challenged my opponent on the smears and the dishonest attacks and the allegations that were frankly just so ridiculous over the top. Uh, but we did not believe the people in the 5th District would believe that. And I think that's been proven tonight. That you can spend in the range of, I think, $8 million, something like that, about $8 million, and after a while it just becomes noise. And people just, they just don't believe it. And so, you know, I, I won't say you're never concerned in the course of the campaign when you're enduring that kind of a barrage, but when you know you stand on truth, and you know truth is on your side, and you know the issues are on your side, we were actually talking about what we believed, what we stood for, and uh, the other side was trying to uh, not take any positions on anything, deny the positions they took in order to try to win the nomination. Uh, we're seeing that play out. We saw that play out in the course of the presidential election as well. So I'm not going to say you never have, you know, the campaign, you go through the rigorous campaign, you, you know, it ebbs and flows, but we always believe we would win. Okay. Anybody over here in the side? Questions, anyone? Right here. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Could you identify where you're from, please? Tyler from Townsville, Florida. Um, flash forward to January, if you've been elected and it comes through the next couple of days, what is the first thing you're going to do? Well, I will say what are the things most important to me. I'll, I'll answer it that way. She asked what would be the first thing we would do in Congress. I'll, I'll cite uh, three, four issues that I think are most important to address. Uh, one, I will be a champion for the sanctity of life. Thank you. we can get a majority in the House, I hope that we can get uh, the Life and Conception Act to the floor for a vote. You would think, you would like to think, and it's a shame that's not the case, but you could have unity in protecting innocent, precious life in the womb, and what can you put ahead of that? And again, that was an issue in the campaign, quite frankly, the, the sanctity, the preciousness of life, you know, how uh, folks can support, as my opponent did, you know, abortion up to the moment of birth, for any reason, without restriction, they want taxpayers to pay for it. And so I will be a champion for life. I think another issue we've got to address is our fiscal situation. Our yep, national here, debt. Here. You know, we're not hearing either party really address that like we need to. And that's a critical issue for the future. And that's been exacerbated by the pandemic, uh, if you will, or the, the virus, I should say. Uh, and, you know, we've added to that with, 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 with the virus. And there's going to be a reckoning coming. It's important for our children, our grandchildren, our future to address that. Another issue, which uh, we made an issue in the, in the course of the campaign, was reforming immigration. Yep. And I think we've got to do that. And I think that's critically important. And I'll add another issue, I think, is you know, address the federal government's role in education. Yeah. And, and I think that we want, you know, I certainly believe that diminishing federal government's control in our education system. I think that ought to be a state and a local issue. I don't yeah. think that ought to be a federal yeah. issue. And I realize I'm one out of 435. I hope to be in the majority. And I, I believe and hope that we'll have a president, uh, our president reelected. But those will be issues of, of importance to me. Yes, sir. Uh, Santiago with WFXR. Uh, one issue you ran on was reopening the economy safely. 
Uh, here tonight, there doesn't seem to be any following of CDC guidelines on uh, safety precautions. So what do you see as uh, safely reopening? Are you following the guidelines? You know, uh, I've been in the camp of safely reopening the economy, safely getting our kids back to school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I believe that learning is essential. I believe that our teachers are essential, our kids are essential. Um, and you know, I think it's critically evident that the, the impact upon our kids to not be in school socially, academically, developmentally, in many other ways, and now that we know the risks, and we understand what the risks are or are not to children, uh, and you know, I'm thankful for the work the president has done in accelerating therapeutics and the treatment to where while infections are up, because we're testing, what, some seven million a week now? But the, thank the Lord, the death rate is going way down. And as, as therapeutics have improved, they tell us that we have as many as four vaccines around the corner. I certainly hope and pray that is the case. That's coming soon. Uh, but we've learned who's at higher risk. We've learned what precautions need to be taken. And also believe in constitutional freedom. And I also believe in individual liberty. Yep. Amen. And I also believe that it's critically important that we fully, fully reopen the economy. I believe that people tonight across the country will vote not to shut down the country, not to lock down the country. And I think they'll vote, will be proven to vote for the president who understands that. And I think, again, we've got to continue to reopen, fully reopen. There is no substitute for the United States economy. Uh, there's no spending package that can replace that. You know, when you look at the devastation from businesses being closed, and some of them never recovering, from people not being able to go to funerals, to weddings, to graduations, to visit their loved ones in, in, in assisted living facilities, uh, you know, to be behind in their mortgage, their rent, uh, their car payments, or what have you, uh, from, from the shutdown that was put in place and a continued lockdown in some places. So uh, I'm very much in favor of that. Someone else? Anyone else? Bob, you mentioned unifying uh, the, the district, if you will. How can you? when uh, some folks are so diabolically opposed to some of your views. Is that unification even possible? Well, we certainly live in, 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 a, in a challenging time politically, and we can see that with the passions and the intensity you know, all around us on all sides. Um, however, I do believe that we are unified, that uh, we want a better future for our kids. And we wanted our kids to grow up in America that looks something like what we grew up in. Ideally, in a better America and a stronger America. I think that everybody wants a better job. Uh, everybody wants higher wages. We saw that happening with the Trump economy, where unemployment was at record low, and we had wage growth that we hadn't seen in decades. I think everybody wants $2 gas prices instead of $4 gas prices like we saw in the previous administration, which impacts middle income and lower income America like a few other things do, along with all the costs and the price. I think everybody wants good schools for their kids. And, and, and I think people want school choice, by the way. I'm a big proponent of school choice. That, yeah. that was a point of contrast. I realize that's a state issue, but I do think there's things the federal government can do to support that. And uh, I, I believe that uh, that was a point of contrast also between myself and my opponent. Most Americans want to keep the greatest health care uh, in the world that we enjoy, and they don't want government to take over health care. They don't want single-payer health care. Uh, you know, I, I think that most Americans uh, you know, want to be safe and secure, and they want to support law enforcement, and they want law enforcement to need to protect them. I think there's a lot of issues that unite us, and maybe how they're delivered and how they're Presented, you know, uh, there are some who I believe do want to divide us and do want to, you know, pit us against one another. So I, um, I, I think there's a lot of things that do unite us, and I think we work towards those things uh, that we have in common. And I sort of plan and hope to do that. One more question. If you just had one statement to kind of sum up what it means to you to one, how you're feeling, what would it be? Well. I guess I would say gratitude would be one. I would say gratitude. You know, um, 
and, and I'll say this, uh, as a born again believer, if there's anything I should have, it should be a grateful, thankful heart. Amen. You know, when you have been uh, forgiven a debt that you can never pay yourself, and when you understand that as a born again Christian who's accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and His finished work on the cross, uh, then you have a grateful heart. And and I, I've, you know, tried, Tracy and I tried to raise in our children a grateful, thankful heart. And when you realize that you stand on the shoulders of those who came before you, when you realize you stand on the shoulders of someone like James Madison, the first congressman from the 5th District, when you stand on the shoulders of people like Virgil Goode, who I admired as a congressman, I was thankful to represent me when we first moved back to Campbell County 15 years ago, when you stand on the shoulders of people like Tom Garrett, I didn't give him a shout out, Tom Garrett, who's an outstanding congressman, who I'm so thankful and my team, make sure Tom gets to see and hear this, but Tom Garrett, who I will try to emulate his voting record in Congress, uh, who's an outstanding congressman and who came and, and supported our campaign when he didn't have to. He took a risk with that and uh, took some heat from it. And you stand on the shoulders of those who served before. And you realize that you truly are a servant of the people. And, you know, when you serve on local county government and you serve your neighbors, you serve those you go to church with, those you, you, you work with, those who uh, you go to the grocery store, or you go to the, the Walmart with, or, or you, you, know, you walk the neighborhood and you see they know where you live, <laughs> and they've got your address published on the county website, <laughs> and your phone number, and your email. Uh, but you learn to be responsible to those whom you serve. And I think that's great preparation. That the, that the founders intended citizen legislators. They didn't intend career politicians. And, they, and, uh, and you're thankful to, to literally thousands who've given, thousands who've prayed, hundreds who've volunteered, hundreds who've served, and tens of thousands who voted for you. And you want to validate that trust, and you want to earn that trust from everybody, even those who, you know, who you want to earn the respect of those who didn't vote for you. Um, and you hope to earn their vote the next time, you know, if the Lord allows you to serve again. And so I guess I would say, if I was going to say in a word, with a sense, I'm grateful and I'm thankful. And it truly is a humbling task. You know, it's a challenge where you're going and the, and the journey that you take and the battle that's ahead, if you will, for the things that. Now, I call this race uh, nationally as well as ours. This is a race is America good or is America bad? Yep. You know, is America the greatest nation in the world? Are the principles upon which our nation was founded worth preserving? Yep. Yeah. Okay. What is America an evil nation, an illegitimate nation, a racist nation that needs to be torn, torn down and rebuilt in a different image? And I often, in the course of the campaign, said we are really in a battle for the future of our country, and the competing visions for the future of our country couldn't be more distinct. So uh, it's humbling to join in that battle in this capacity, and I'm just grateful and thankful to those who placed their faith and trust in me in this election. So thank you very much. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You know, there's one thing that uh, we can all say is true with what we have seen. In this election, the effectual, fervent prayers of righteous men and women have availed much. Yeah. Yeah. And that's Woo. what we pray for. So, as we uh, close this evening, let's uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have had today uh, to serve you. Thank you for the opportunity we've had today to rejoice at victory for Bob Good. Father God, as he goes to Congress, we know, Father God, that he stands with principles that are unwavering, truths that are always there. And fully expecting, Father God, for him to be that leader for those social issues and those fiscal issues that all of us feel are incredibly important. Father God, we bless this family. We ask that you would protect them with uh, all of what they do and where, where they stand. Thank you for those uh, opportunities that we have had to lift up the name of Jesus. And, and, and we are thankful, Father God, for a man going to Congress that's not willing to back down to even use that name. 
So, Father, thank you for that. So we bless him, we bless the family, we thank you for this evening, and we ask, Father God, that each and every day you give us the opportunity to bring glory to your name and bless somebody else in the process. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's children together said, Amen. Amen.